Orbital filling and electron configurations. Okay, so now we are finally ready to cap off this whole unit. So we're going to talk about orbital filling before we talk about electron configurations. And in a way, it's going to kind of cross over a little bit. We'll begin with orbital filling with electron energy diagrams and gradually add in electron configurations from there. So just keep in mind the general principle, which is that orbitals are filled from lowest to highest energy, and we want to produce the lowest overall energy state for the atom, which is the ground state. So that means that we're going to follow Hund's rule, and we're going to fill orbitals of lowest energy before orbitals of highest energy, higher energy, until we run out of electrons. Okay. So here is our orbital energy diagram here, okay? So an energy state diagram with all of our orbitals on here. And we have hydrogen first, okay? And hydrogen has one electron, of course, okay? And when we place the electron, according to the rules, into the orbital energy diagram, then, of course, we put it in the 1s orbital, okay? Now, I have this spin up. It doesn't matter if it's spin up or spin down, okay? Both of those would be the same energy. So often you'll just see spin up because I think that's just what people do. But if you do put it in spin down, it's the same energy and it's perfectly correct. Now the electron configuration that we're going to write for this is 1s1, okay? So what that means is that the principal quantum number is 1 because it's the 1s orbital, okay? So there's 1. There's the orbital we're putting it in. Okay, so that's the S, and then the superscript here, that's the number of electrons. And so since hydrogen only has one electron, then the electron configuration is 1s1. All right, so helium, of course, has two electrons, and since each orbital can hold two electrons, we go ahead and slot it in with the other electron. So now we have two electrons in our 1s. Notice they have opposite spin, otherwise we would be breaking the Pauli exclusion principle, which is not allowed, okay? And it's not possible to unpair them because there's only one orbital at that energy level, so the lowest energy configuration is both of them in the 1s orbital. And so we would write the electron configuration as 1s, so there's the orbital we're filling, and then now it has two electrons in it, okay? Now notice I didn't write 1s1, 1s2. You just write the highest number of electrons in that orbital. That's the only one that you write for that. Okay, so this is just a schematic for what I just said, okay? So the number in front of the orbital that indicates the n, the principal shell, okay? The letter here is the orbital type, okay? And that's the subshell, of course. It's also the L, because remember, L equals zero means an S orbital. Okay? And then this superscript, that's the number of electrons in that subshell. All right? All of the electron configurations follow this same pattern, no matter what the orbital is that you are filling. Okay, so lithium, three electrons. All right? So the first two go down in the 1s, okay? The next highest energy orbital, the next lowest, okay, is the 2s. All right, so we're going to put it in 2s, and again, I have it spin up, but if you put it in spin down, that's fine, okay? And so the 1s2, sorry, the 1s is full, okay? So 1s2, and then we're going to write down this 2s with one electron in it, okay? Now with lithium, this is the first time where we see some other way to write this electron configuration, okay? So if you get your periodic table, and you look at the end of the n equals 1 period, okay, so the first period, then you're going to see the noble gas helium, okay? So what you can do is write, use square brackets and write the previous noble gas in brackets, and that stands for the electron configuration for that noble gas, okay? Which for helium is 1s2, okay? So that actually makes a huge difference as we go, you know, farther down the periodic table where we're, you know, using argon and krypton, and it can actually save quite a bit of writing 
Okay, so you put the noble gas in brackets and then you just write the valence electrons, okay? And valence electrons are those that have the highest N, okay? And for everything except for a noble gas, they are also not completely full in that N. That principal shell is not completely full. Now for a noble gas it is, all right? And we'll see that in other examples. Okay, so this again, here's a schematic showing what I was just talking about, okay? So here's the complete electron configuration, okay? So 1s2, 2s1, that's from our orbital energy diagram. The electrons in the highest number shell, highest principal quantum number shell, are the valence electrons, okay? These guys, in anything lower than the highest, so in this case for lithium, it's just n equals 1, but those are called core electrons, okay? And those aren't reactive in general, all right? But valence electrons are the ones that do the chemistry, all right? And so one of the reasons why we can take the shortcut in writing the noble gas configuration for this part, and again, it makes more of a difference as you go deeper into the periodic table, is that these electrons don't react anyway, so we can just write that previous noble gas configuration and then just list out the configuration for the valence electrons. And both of those ways of writing the electron configuration are perfectly fine. You may do either one. Okay, so let's continue. So beryllium, four electrons, okay? So as before, two are placed in the 1s. Those are the core electrons. Now we're filling valence electrons, okay? So 2s, those would be valence electrons. So would 2p, okay? We don't have any in 2p right now, but those would be valence electrons also because they're both in n equals 2, the n equals 2 principal, quant principal shell, okay? So for beryllium, four electrons, okay, so two can be slotted into 2s. So the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, or, again, the previous noble gas configuration, and then just 2s2. Okay, boron, five electrons. All right, this is the first time we are filling p's. All right, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, all right. And now our configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, okay? Or, again, previous noble gas, which stands for these guys, 2s2, 2p1, all of these are valence electrons. They're all n equals 2, so they are all valence electrons. All right, carbon, same thing. And so if you look down at this configuration here, then these are all valence electrons. Notice that we followed Hund's rule because we are getting the ground state electron configuration. Also notice that you can't see whether these are spin up or spin down. So if you wanted to know if there were unpaired electrons in the ground state, you would write out the three p orbitals and slot in two electrons, okay? And so you would, be able, you would then see, as you put in two electrons, followed Hund's rule, you would see that there were two unpaired electrons, okay? So t six electrons total. These are all considered valence electrons. This one, this group, those are core electrons, okay? So we can substitute the previous noble gas for all core electrons, okay? So now you go ahead and try it. So fill in the electrons for oxygen and write the electron configuration and do it both ways for now. Okay, so oxygen has eight electrons. So we're gonna slot in the electrons from lowest to highest, okay? So two in the 1s, two in the 2s, and then we have four left that we need to put into three orbitals, okay? So we put in one, two, three, and then we have to go back and pair one of them and notice that it's spin down, okay? Another thing I want to point out is that if this paired group were over here and then these two were singletons, that's fine. These guys have to have the same spin if they were both spin down. That would be fine too, all right? So all of those possibilities would give the ground state configuration, okay? So writing the electron configuration both ways, 1s2. 2s2, 2p4, okay, 
So notice we write all the p electrons together, and there are three p orbitals, and each one can hold two electrons. So that, those, that group of p orbitals, that set of p orbitals, can hold a maximum of six electrons. It has four. Okay, and then the other way, of course, we could substitute the noble gas for the core electrons and then just write out the valence electrons. So oxygen has six valence electrons. And that's going to be important to be able to identify once we start drawing Lewis structures. Okay, so the Aufbau principle. Okay, so I talked about this in the previous presentation just a little bit. And just to remind you that there will be some examples posted of how to do this, okay? So you can build up your electron configurations by adding successive electrons to orbitals following the order on the periodic table, okay? So this makes it very, very easy to write electron configurations for various elements. Okay, so again, another reminder, the S block, this is where we're filling S electrons. The D block is where we're filling D electrons, the P block, P electrons, and the F block, F electrons. So you should probably keep those in mind and get them in your memory. Also, just a reminder, this group right here, we call those the tra transition metals at the beginning of the semester. So the D block and the transition metals, those are two really common names for that part of the periodic table. Okay, so again, examples using the outbound principle will be posted separately, so watch for those.